right, greetings, everybody. Welcome to One Degree of Scandalous with Kato Kalin. Kato's in the house. And Tom Zenner. Thanks so much for joining us. Uh, download, subscribe. If you're new to the show, go ch- over the Thanksgiving holiday, over your break. Binge. We've got yep. so many great shows over the last four months. If you follow Tom on Instagram or myself on Instagram, you'll see that we give a little preview of all the great shows we have. And, of course, today's will be no different. Every show is sort of like a, a not a home run. It's a grand slam, I think. And, I, Tom, I've been sitting. You notice I'm, I'm sitting on the edge of my seat. You know why? Yeah, no, I don't. Well, if you remember, you said you had a big, big date with your uh, daughter's boyfriend. And at my date, I mean a get-together yep. that he's never really said, hey, do you have time this weekend? And uh, uh, Stock Tip Dave and I both said, he's going to ask if he can marry your daughter. Now, we should have a drum or roll, but are we right? Is that what happened in this big week? Yeah, he asked me and I said no. Yeah. I said, let me think about it. No, he did. Michael, what a great guy, decided to to ask me if it would be all right if he would do that. Really? And I said, yes. Welcome to the family. I can't wait. Now, what did you celebrate? What, how did so did, he? So the cool thing is, he's not going to do it over the holidays. Okay. You know, he's not going to do it over Christmas. That's too predictable, too mm-hmm. cliche. I think he's going to do it in the next couple days, right before Thanksgiving, and then everybody. Uh, Brooke's mom's going to be in town with her husband and, and son. Me, Shonda, Dash, Ivana, we're gonna we're gonna have this big dinner. So I think it's happening next week. I don't think I'm giving away anything. A, I don't think Brooke's listening right now, my daughter. Uh, but B, it's gonna happen in just a couple oh. days. So yeah, they're doing it. I'm excited. So she still doesn't know. To, uh, as she a, thinks something's up, but she has no idea when. Where did, where did you guys meet at your place? He came over. He was driving up from Huntington or from Huntington Beach back to West LA, uh, and he stopped along the way. And we had a little chat, and it kinda, was nice. But you kind of knew going in, going. I was uh, thinking that had to be it, right? Yeah, that had yeah. to be it. And he's got the ring and the whole thing. He's a great guy. We're so excited that he's going to be part of the family. That's so great, thanks for great. asking. Yeah. Appreciate it. Ken, I have a question. What is, before we get to our interview, we have a great guest, a great interview. The inner workings of Hollywood from a guy that you're going to recognize, who's also got a very big podcast. Let me ask you this question: What is wrong with people in their seven? when they can't give it up, when you can't just stop. You've had a hell of a run. Give it up. Bill Belichick, give it up, fool. Nick Saban, give it up, man. Why not leave on top? And now Jay Leno. He's working on that car in his garage, the 1907 steam mobile or whatever the hell that is. I know why. And the fire, the gas hits them. And then why yeah. don't they just stop and enjoy life? Well, because the, the enjoying life to them is working. Working keeps you young. Uh, Bob Hope once said, and Bill Maher says this all the time, and I know this, Bob Hope says, Bob, you're you're 89. Why do you still take tours of uh, doing comedy? Why do that? And Bob said, because the gardener doesn't laugh. <laughs> That's good. I get that. And I get wanting to stay busy. I'm going to do the same thing. I don't yeah. want to stop working. But why it at that level? Up. Why, Cato? Why does Bill Belichick have to keep grinding 18, 16 and 18 have hours a day? Have you seen Biden in public? Oh, come on. <laughs> why, why do have you see, is this, are you serious? Well, he's I, a guy that should not be a, working. He's a gaff of tape. You can just watch anything for the for today's gaff. Watch by, I, I think though, I, well, I think the mind though of someone like a, a Saban, a Belichick, a, a Leno, they're sharp and their mind is sharp. And I think that's it. So I think, to me personally, I'm going to disagree with you because I think that keeps them young and they still have a lot to give and a lot of wisdom. Be an analyst on ESPN or Fox. Stop the coaching, guys. Jay, have a podcast. It's safer. I don't think any... Gas fumes have hit us in the face. No, he's in a hyperbolic chamber. Poor right dude. Now. He's, I know. He's going to be okay, though. I think, yeah, yeah, I think he's, he's going to make okay. a recovery. So that's good. All right. Um, Kato's look. a little bit tired because he was up all week trying to get Taylor Swift no, tickets. No, I'm not tired. He was I'm trying not. to get Taylor Swift tickets all week. I think he got them. My daughter got yeah. them. I can't believe she got them. You know, I always said that. I always say Taylor Swift should write a song and it, just call it. Maybe I'm the problem. <laughs> I've always said right. That. How many guys has she gone through? She's, no. she's bashing them constantly. Okay, you ready to get into this interview? Yeah, yeah. I can't wait. I, I, this is, and I did his show. Uh, you, iconic. You'll see him. You, you recognize him right away. And it's a show that I've watched for. He's been like I think 12 years. And and I love him. And I love the guy who started the whole thing. A guy named Harvey Levin. Yep. Okay. So after this break, Dax Holt, host of Hollywood Raw, going to join us. All right, welcome back, everybody. Uh, it is time to bring in our guest. Oh, Excited right. about this one. Uh, this guy had the opportunity to welcome Cato onto their show a couple months ago. That was a great episode. Yeah, you didn't tell me though. I had to do it nude because it was Hollywood <laughs> Raw. Those guys saw me, and you should have known by the title. Thank God the internet adds ten inches, and and even Dax said that. Co-host <laughs> of Hollywood <laughs> Raw. Let's bring him in, Dax Holt. Dax, thanks so much for joining us. Great seeing you, buddy. <laughs> 
<laughs> Good to see you. You didn't tell him the full name. It's Hollywood Raw Dog. That's why we. That's we just go super raw on our podcast. You know, you got to keep some things up uh, for suspense and for the imagination. <laughs> I, I was on fire. The K train came prepared. Hey, Dax, were you ready for for the all systems go from Cato that day? Because he brings it, man. I mean, it is dude, and it's entertaining, that- and yeah. <laughs> that episode was fantastic. We actually got a bunch of press off the episode, but Cato is de- probably one of our favorite episodes that we've ever had. And the thing is, so we have a private Facebook group and a lot of people, like we ask them when they come into the f- private Facebook group, who is your favorite episode and who do you want on? And Cato is repeatedly one of the top favorited episodes. We we've love Cato. We love Cato. Keep going, Dax. <laughs> and you look great today. Hey, Dax, that's exactly <laughs> what Cato needed because he was up till. 2.30 last night, got yeah. up to work out at 7 a.m. He's a little sleepy, but that revived him. I'm awake now, Dax, all because of you, dude. <laughs> you can't pump Kato up, man. He's good to go. Caffeine Dax. Hey, Dax, really a- a thrilled to have you here. Congrats on the success of Hollywood Raw. Uh, really one of the preeminent Hollywood, you know, gossip type news, Hollywood yeah. news type shows. Give us the genesis of it. We all know your background started out at TMZ. Your partner, Adam, is still roaming the streets of New York. Adam Glenn getting sound bites. And both you guys are hustlers. And just like Cato and yeah. I, self-made, use your background as as fuel and, and whatever mm-hmm. context you well, have. And then just it, take it from there. He's a Cal State Fullerton dude. Of course he's got energy. I'm a Titan myself. <laughs> I used to work in that Man. pub. I was the bartender, Dax. Remember you coming in there. Dax always walked in with a point oh eight he didn't even need a cocktail he was great always looking younger too dude you are looking great and you know what i was going to ask i i want to, to go the background of what, what tom just asked about your background Screw Tom's but question. also but also how how recognizable and everybody's seeing you on tmz so take it from there and just give us the history yeah, you know, obviously TMZ was a huge springboard for my career. It was my first job out of Cal State Fullerton. I was hired to work for Harvey Levin, literally. So let, let's see, how does this work? I was doing an internship at Cal State Fullerton for Extra, the other entertainment mm-hmm. show. Yeah. Met Harvey. He was like starting up this website. Um, so I started to do like red carpets for him. And the day I graduated, what year is this? Now? I started full time at uh, TMZ. And like the, literally, that was my first thing. The year was what? Uh, 2005. 2005 TMZ. Well, that's a good family to get into with Lisa G at Extra, Fatana, yeah, Nawabi. I, she's just such a champion oh, yeah. over there. Just great, I mean, it was. It was a great crew at Extra, great crew at TMZ, and I think he like really taught me how to just work hard. Yeah. Like, you know, being being straight out of college, I was hungry, I was ready for it, and I had all the time in my life to like really devote into working my ass off to to be really good. And so, learned from the best, worked there for 12 years, you know, was on TV every single day, couple different shows, like I became one of their lead reporters, so I was the one doing all the hits with Fox and all that kind of stuff. And then I got to a point where I was like, okay, I need to do something different. So I ended up leaving there. And uh, about a year later, I started up the podcast with uh, my buddy, Adam, who was also a TMZ employee. He was the one in New York running around the streets, getting the best videos. He's the kind of guy that, you know, he he sees Oprah and she runs over. She's like, oh my God, Adam, let, let, let's chat. I mean, he literally knows every celebrity, especially the biggest A-list stars. Um, so we said, you know what, let's let's join powers. Let's start up this podcast. Let's kind of reveal the fourth wall of Hollywood because, you know, everyone knows about the stars, but like, let's talk about what people don't know. And that is how it works. People setting up paparazzi photos. Let's talk to bodyguards and how they're doing the little side deals with paparazzi to get photographs of the celebs. Like wow. so many interesting things happen on our podcast. We have fantastic guests like private jet flight attendants, yeah. or like I said, we've had Kanye West bodyguard. We've had Justin Bieber's old bodyguard. We've had all these people that are giving the real side of what Hollywood is actually happening. Yeah. And it's fun when you peel back the curtain. Yeah. And that's what it's mm-hmm. all about. I used to have a podcast called one degree of glamorous and it was the same types of people. It's the people that are yep. in the middle of it. And I'll be honest with you. I always feel their stories are more interesting. Mm-hmm. They're more interesting. 100%. How did you get that job? What are the perks like? What is the pay like? Is the person you work for cool? Is he a jerk? She a jerk? And that's, that's the biggest thing. What are the yeah. celebs really like? You get this public persona, like mm-hmm. let's say Ellen DeGeneres, you get a public persona and then you you talk to the people that are surrounding them on a daily basis. Okay, what are they really like? Are they as cool as they come across or not at all? Now, you say, you were saying that uh, uh, you interviewed uh, Justin Bieber's ex-bodyguard. Do you find mm-hmm. that people that do the interviews with you 
can lose their jobs? Can they, can their celebrity go, hey, I, I didn't dig it that you did this, this show, you're out. Do you ever get feedback from people say, I never should have done your damn show? Uh, no, not really. Uh, and most of like the, these were former bodyguards. So it was like talking about their time working with that celeb. A lot of people won't talk about their current clients. Um, but that's okay to me. Like, Hey, you know, some of these bodyguards we've talked to have worked with the biggest stars in the world. So I don't need to know about their current client. Just tell me what you know about all your past people. I mean, and the interview with Kanye's bodyguard was so fascinating to how quirky Kanye could be. And even to down to like, you get on an elevator and he's like, just stands there and waits for the bodyguard to push the button. The bodyguard's like, I don't even know what floor we're going to. <laughs> like, what do you want from me? <laughs> you know, so, so many little stories like that and gems. And I think we did have one woman who was a private jet flight attendant who was, she definitely needed to, sculpt her answer so she wouldn't get in trouble yeah but yeah. still then you got great lines, stories right? of oh and you know we also just had on asia scott who is on below deck and she told some crazy stories about just working with rich people not even celebrities just rich people on yachts around the world and some of the weird fetishes and stuff that they want you know, they have at their fingertips because they're crazy wealthy. Yes, the, the Thurston Howell and Mrs. Howell. <laughs> yeah. That was a three-hour yeah. That was a three-hour tour. A three-hour tour. You know, uh, Tom, yeah, I, no, I was going go go to say, when, when you have TMZ, you guys always have that that group shop where everybody gets together and, and talks. Mm-hmm. And you, it's sort of an I, iconic image of, you know, you being on there. And um, do you guys ever have meetings that, they, that Harvey or – in the beginning of TMZ, were you directed to be sort of mean-spirited? And is there anybody in that room that you, you absolutely can't stand that you can say now who you oh, like? Well, I, I would say that I was very mean-spirited at the beginning. Not going to yeah. lie. It was – you know when it was, though? It was it was that time in Hollywood where mean was kind of winning out. Like Perez Hilton was all over the place. Mm-hmm. And, like, it was almost like poking fun at people – to get people to laugh was like the cool thing to do. And so I remember when TMZ first started, I literally my first day on air was calling Chris Angel a douchebag. And, and then Kim Kardashian came into the office one day and I remember Harvey introduced her to, to me and said, Oh, this is Dax. He's the mean one. Huh. And I was like, I was like, Oh shit. And rep. so, mm-hmm. it, yeah. And I was like, I don't want to be known as the mean guy. Like yeah. that, that's the, that's not me. I'm not yeah, yeah, mean. It's totally not. Your and persona. so, I remember that that moment changed the whole trajectory of my career. And I was like, nope, I'm not going to be known as the mean guy. I changed all my pitches. I changed everything about it. Um, and I also had like a, a, a meeting with Bonnie Hunt. You remember when she had a, yeah. a talk show? Yeah, I love her. I, I, yeah, I was backstage with her in her dressing room. And she was just talking about the TV show and TMZ and how she liked it. And she was like, Dax, you got you to gotta, you gotta be funny, not mean be funny. Yeah. And again, those are those comments and those those interactions change it. And I became the nice guy on TMZ. And for from this day forward, everyone comes up to me and says, I love that you always had a positive outlook on stuff compared to a lot of other people in the room. So well, kudos to you for that, for having the maturity to, to well, pivot and, and, like that. And he's a dad and your kids don't want to be have the uh, known that you have the mean dad. You yeah. Know, you know, and, and you know what? That just doesn't draw people in. Right. And, and they are drawn into positivity yeah. and being a light mm-hmm. and being fun and funny. And that and you just look at you. That is your persona. I mean, I think. But at that time, you had to do something to stand out. It's very competitive. You're all trying to get airtime. Yeah. You're trying to get your stories on the air. Yeah. Harvey's demanding. By the way, why don't we talk a little bit about Harvey to work with? Because A, he's a genius. B, what he's created is phenomenal. He's the man. There's no question about mm-hmm. it. He's tough. Mm-hmm. You know, he's demanding. Uh, what was it like? Was there stuff thrown around? There was a lot of yelling in, in meetings in the conference room and things the, like that? The, the thing the thing that I think I look at, when I think of Harvey Levin, I think of literally the hardest worker in all of, all of Hollywood. Um, you know, TMZ has a staff that, let, let's say there's, I don't know, 50 people. No, I wouldn't even say that. Like 30 people working on breaking news. And they're beating newsrooms that have 200 people trying to break news. But that's because Harvey Levin makes it a a spot where you need to work hard or get out of the way. And I really appreciate that he 
changed the, my work ethic for the rest of my life by being like, you know, this is not a place where you walk in and you dick around and then you leave and you get a paycheck. Like you need to break stories. Um, and you know, he's in before everyone else. He stays later than everyone else. The guy lives, sleeps, breathes entertainment news. And that's why he's been so successful. And I think like any boss, you're going to have good days. You're going to have bad days, but at the end of the day, I have a really good relationship with him still. We still text each other. I've done numerous projects with them. You know, I had just filmed a, a show a little while back, which was called like, uh, Who Really Killed Michael Jackson? And they have it up on Hulu. And it was really fat, fun to go back and work with these people because, again, they're hard workers and, you know, I, I enjoy their company. When, when you work with Harvey and uh, you're, you're in the room and everybody, you have 30 employees and the ones that are on camera and that, and I'm not asking what you make, but is the pay scale the go according to who is on TV the most? Is the pay scale? No. It's, is it a, so uh, you don't know what the other person makes that's on TV or, and you have your, your set deal with Harvey, correct? This, the thing is, that's kind of one of the the interesting parts about TMZ is you could be your first day as an intern walking in and be on television on that show. Because if you come in and you've got a cool story to tell, or you are, you know, on the TMZ bus tour and they have you come in for the morning meeting because you had an interaction, you ran into a slub on the street. It doesn't matter what level you are. You can make the TV show at that place. And I think that's one thing that, and like, it incentivizes you to come up with good stories and be good on television because you could be getting paid a ton of money or nothing. You know, I was there for a very long time. I did enjoy my paycheck there. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. <laughs> um, but no, it definitely has nothing to do with how much you're on TV. It's not like yeah, a normal it, SAG kind of type thing. It, you're on there for 12 years and, and there's scandals going on now. One degree of scandal. What Tom, Dax, what, what's with Pete Davidson, who I think personally, I'm, I, I'm sure he's you a great You know guy. what's up with Pete Davidson. Oh, okay. yeah, is this going to be a dick public. joke? Is that it? He can never yeah, get his foot you in the door? Yeah, you know what's up with Come him. on. <laughs> I, I wonder because nice it, rally, by the way. Nice recovery. Emily Ratajkowski, yeah, not and, bad. But the, the, the thing is, I, I, I see certain people in SNL that kind of like a David, Dana Carvey who've been on for so many years. I see people like, a, you know, John Belushi, Chevy Chase. Pete Davidson was barely on the show, and I don't. I, I just yeah, don't but here's get the it. thing, I don't Kato. Get it? We didn't have all the social media and the all no, of that that's stuff a, that's back when David Spade was just plowing through women left and right. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like yeah. it just—it's a different time. And not only that, like I, I'm going to be honest, I think this Emily Ratajkowski and him—I think it's a a good PR stunt all the way. Um, I don't think that this is real. I think that there's a reason that. Emily and Brad Pitt's name were put into the 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 news cycle. I think that Pete gets it. I mean, Pete's love life is covered way more than anything he does when it comes to comedy. It works for him. His love life is a storyline. And yeah. when you date the biggest, hottest women in the world, like Ariana Grande, you date Kim Kardashian and Kate Beckinsale, like, that's that's his narrative. Yeah. I think he he likes that. I, 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 think, I think they do too. Though. Well, I, I think see. I disagree, publicity. guys. I disagree. A, that's what we thought of Kim Kardashian too. That maybe this was like manufactured. Then it seemed real. I don't think Emily has that much to gain by doing this. Be to be attached with the serial dater with the big, you know what, you know, as far as her new boyfriend. Um, I here's what I think it is. I think at the core, women love guys that are nice, thoughtful caring and i think he checks those boxes that a lot of guys no you're don't. forgetting and one funny. and he's and funny. extremely funny and he, yeah. and he and opens I think... the door with being famous so you start with that and then you bring in the intangibles like john mayer i mean you, you don't fake your way into getting that many beautiful women yeah. there's got to be something there right i i think i think he is so funny and that is attractive to women of i course, think yeah. that with Kim Kardashian, I think he won her over by being funny and complete opposite of Kanye West. I think it was a breath of fresh air for her. Low maintenance, funny, willing to get any tattoo on you, on her body mm -hmm. for his name. Yep. Yeah, and it is fascinating. When I saw that, I couldn't believe it. I could not believe and it. And free food at Taco Bell. I mean, you can't beat it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, Dax, I'm going to tell you one my Harvey Levin story. And then I was okay. going to ask you one thing. So this is when they were launching TMZ Sports. 2012, 
probably right around there when he got the idea to do that. And I need Charles and some of the other guys there because so many of those guys had that extra background. They all, you know, came from extra. Mm -hmm. um, so Harvey, my background is sports. And so Harvey got whiff of what I was doing and sent them this package, the, you know, my ideas, how, what to do with TMZ sports. He, he really liked it. So I came in for one meeting, went great. Then I flew in again for another meeting and it went awesome. I'm in there with Harvey and everybody in the conference room. And he was like, love it. This is amazing. You get exactly what I'm looking, kind of the, the whole thing. He, he turns and he goes, I'm going on vacation. I'll be gone for a week. I'll be in touch with you when I get back. And I have not heard from him since. <laughs> <laughs> Which is really surprising because he doesn't blow smoke up people's asses like that. Like he's not someone to say, I really like you and then never call you again. If he likes someone like that, is, that to me is shocking. You never got a call back. I know. So some, someday yeah. it'll what happen is, where that, we talk I, again. I, Tom told me that story. And I was like, there's just <laughs> no way. So, I, and something I've known big must have broke the next week. Or maybe they got a different – maybe went internal, you know, with, yeah. with TMZ Sports. And, and My, I, I've known Harvey now for almost 28 years. Yeah. And that was in uh, New York. And uh, I think it was at the um, – Oh, Hudson Hotel bar somewhere. And then we, we kept meeting periodically because of the OJ trial. And I kept seeing him everywhere. I, I, I'd like to say, I, I guess we became friends. And I guess he was always kind of kind to me and always said a good word. Well, think how much time safe. he spent in the courtroom yeah. watching what you were going through at the yeah. time. That's uh, kind of where Harvey became a national figure, the OJ trial. Oh, without yeah. a doubt. Hey, Dax. 100%. No, he was, he was the CBS OJ Simpson court reporter. So... Everyone knew his name. Like when I when I told my parents, "Oh, I'm I'm working for Harvey Levin," you know, back in the day, they were like, "Oh yeah, we know him. He was covering the O.J. Simpson trial left and right." And then, you know, when I first met him, I had no idea of all of his like credits. I didn't know about celebrity justice. I didn't know about people's court. Like I just knew him as, "Oh, this is the guy upstairs." I'm told to meet, <laughs> you yeah. know. But yeah, he's he's been really successful. Hey, Dave, is my volume okay? Am I am I good? Meters registering. Okay, cool. Just making sure of that. Hey, Dax, what about the public perception? That came out of nowhere. <laughs> yeah, I know, but you know what the hell? It's a podcast. I wanted to make sure my audio is sounding good. Hey, Dax, what about the public perception that TMZ has an open checkbook? Like they will mm -hmm. cut a check. I, they have to. They have to pay for some stories. Do you go in there if you've got something big and say, Harvey, we need 20 grand for this and they'll talk? Or, or how does it work? Are there limits? Is it, is it kind of mysterious? No, 100% there's the limits. Listen, I was the one running the Clips Clearance Department for 12 years there. I was the one, my sole job was to buy all the outside paparazzi photos, videos, anything that someone would take on the street, they would send it. I was the one making the deals. And yes, there's definite lines. They don't pay, uh, you know, up the wazoo for stuff. I, that the, the problem with that is you always hear about the crazy photos and how much they go through. You hear about Brad and Angelina selling the, the first photos of their kids for a million dollars. That's not reality. You know what I'm saying? There was thousands of things we passed on because people wanted crazy money and it's not worth it. It's, you know, it's, what is this really going to do? There's there, we're, we're not going to make this money back on that story. So yeah, people have it in their mind. You're going to make thousands of thousands of dollars. It's just not the case. You know, I, I was, uh did this one a show where I did a lot of man in the street stories. And I, you probably remember this, Dax and Tom, you probably do too. I was on Hollywood Boulevard doing these man in the streets, talking to people and the superheroes dressed as their, their characters. And I remember there was a, there was a huge fight, Dax. Remember where uh, it was in the news where Catwoman had a fight with Spider-Man and mm -hmm. then other, other uh, costume characters got involved. It was me right in the middle interviewing everybody. And at the time <laughs> I was with a reporter that I was seeing and, um, this story became huge. And the person I told it that I was working for, I said, I got this great story. Anyways, it, it, basically, a lot of money changed hands. I didn't see a cent of it. All because of my man in the street. And it was huge. It was on Kimmel. It was on every, it was on every network that this big fight broke out on Hollywood Boulevard. And I was the one that, I didn't start it, but I kind of started because I did the interviews and, and then one got jealousy of the other. And then I, then there's, I said, oh, it's an actual cat fight. <laughs> it's cat woman. And, uh, <laughs> and I had all these great lines and not one damn cent. And I was like, this, I think TMZ even took it, but uh, I know there was a lot of money in, involved of uh, uh, the network that that bought it because it was an mm -hmm. exclusive and it was, it ran, it was the lead story. That's so cool. Like, God, wow. it was so much. <laughs> uh, hey Dax, what, uh, is there, what do you think about just the current culture? 
Does it affect Hollywood news? Does it affect what you guys do? Do you think there's more of a craving to have a release because of all the BS we have to put up with in political news and the heavy world news? Do you think there's more of a mark? I kind of do. I think, I think what people act like, you know, this woke mentality is everywhere, which it is, but it's driven by a smaller percentage, right? It's driven by big megaphones. It's driven by the traditional media and things like that. But I think people, and the way I know this is go to a sporting event. No one gives a shit about what political party you are. I mean, they just want to high five you, cheer, have a good time. Yeah. You know, you go on a, on an airplane. Like I flew back from Phoenix yesterday. You know, it took us an hour to get off the plane. One of those things where they, you know, you're at the gate, but they still can't let you up. No one's getting upset. No one's freaking out. Like you're always reading these stories, but w- what's your perception? Cause you've been doing this a long time. And in the late two thousands, you know, 2005, six, seven, eight, nine, that, that was such a heyday for celebrity mm-hmm. news and, and pop culture news and things like that. But how do you feel it is out there as far as just the market and the environment and the appetite for this type of content? Well, I think I think it affects comedy more than it affects entertainment news. I feel like people aren't allowed to joke about anything anymore without getting canceled or getting called out or having to apologize. So I think comedy gets it way worse. I would say that there is a level of calling people out to make headlines. You know, like if I'm mad about something someone said or something they did, it's like immediately it becomes a news story where it probably wouldn't have become a news story back then. But people getting upset about stuff is now a trigger and everyone likes to write stories about what the latest actor said wrong or did wrong, or even diving back into their Twitter feeds from 10 years ago and finding something that they posted back then and trying to bring it up. So I think it's become more commonplace to call people out if you don't like something they've done where that wasn't a new story back 10 years ago. I also think that, uh, Everything was celebrity driven. What the, what celeb? You know, Pete Davidson, Ye, or Kanye, and all these stories that came out. I think it's going to switch to more people doing stories of politicians because of the divide that we have with blue and red and and crime in democratic cities. And I just think, I think there's a change happening, and I, I don't think it's a positive change. But I just think with um, just in with the elections going on, still going on, month uh, almost a month into it, that there's going to be. And I don't know what it is. I just think that something's going to major break in the news with something really illegal that's happening. I don't know if it's going well, to it just take over the the, the yeah, cycle. It'll take over the cycle, and then you're going to, you're going to find out more. And I think he, uh, with the stuff with Elon Musk, and he's not a celebrity, but he's a billionaire. That he, I guess he is a celebrity. But I just think there's something going on uh, politically that's going to be. Well, I think I think you're right in that regard. Because listen, before Trump became president, politics weren't covered in our entertainment news. Yeah. Once Trump got involved, he became the biggest celebrity in the world. Whether you loved him or you hated him, he was the number one talking point on every entertainment show, on every news channel, on everywhere. And so I think there is some level of politicians becoming celebrities or being at least covered like celebrities because – I mean, they're they're the ones kind of affecting. I, I, they're affecting our world. True. You know what I'm but, saying? Like a normal such, celeb can't yeah, yeah. choose what laws are going into effect. It's such an echo chamber, though, because the only people that are going to be interested in those stories, A, I find politicians utterly boring and just I, I don't want to know anything about them. I can't stand but them. There's a change with that now, because I think regardless of what you th- you think – it's sort of like Hunter Biden, not a politician, but his dad is, and his stuff with crack and porno and hookers. But trust me, people like that. So I think he changed the narrative, and something will happen with that case, and it's just well, going to be huge that, news. A lot of politicians are super corrupt, so yeah. they've been getting away with shit for so many years because yeah, that, that, exactly that spotlight meant. hasn't been on them like it is on celebrities. And if you remember, Harvey actually had started up TMZ DC a long time ago. Wow. He saw the writing on the wall a long time ago and was like, I want to put the spotlight on politicians. People weren't ready for it back then. So I think it only lasted a year, and, year and a half. Uh, where he we could were do covering. that again. That would be, I think that would be ideal right well, now. I Tom, think it would work. And Tom, sure. look at, look at the Paul Pelosi story. That's not just news. That's entertainment news as well. Yeah. And it's just the, the DC idea is, well, it goes kind of, uh, you know, in the whole USA. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. No, I didn't know he did that. I forgot that. But I think he could do it right now, and, and it'd be huge, especially over the next two years. You know what we're facing <laughs> the next two years now. Hey, Dax, we'll let you go here in just a second. Any big – is there anything out there that you'd love to get? Any – is there that one person you'd love to talk to or bring on Hollywood Raw? I know you guys get access to pretty much anything you want, but if you had that that yeah. golden ticket, you could say, "Let me get this person and find out." You know, the thing is, we aren't we aren't going for the biggest celebrities in the world. That's not our thing. I don't need Brad Pitt. I don't need Angelina. What I want is like Candy Spelling, because I think she has fascinating stories, and or to even get Candy and Tori on at the same time and just be like what the fuck really happened between you two? Uh-huh. You know, like we, there's all these stories in the public about your guys's public breakdown. Like what happened? Where, how are you guys doing now? Like I, that's what I'm really curious about. And I don't know. It seems silly, but like, that's who I would want to have. Well, on that the fits your show. That's perfect. You yeah. got to get a hold of Cato. He's friends with all those people, Dina Loan, all of them. <laughs> We're I, working on Dina for our show. Oh yeah, I, I peed in front of, uh, uh, or she peed in front of me. I forget the story. <laughs> uh, uh, Tori, Tori Spelling got that. It's confirmed at a Maxim party, sharing a real bath- peed in sh- front of you. Sh- what are you? What shared, do you mean? We Just- shared a bathroom at a party. <laughs> we well, need more info. Listen, on that. It's, in my, it's in my Cato diary. <laughs> I have been trying to get Tori on for the last like year and a half. Um, it has not come down yet. So if you put in a good word for us, I would love to have Tori on. Well, I, I don't know if it's good anymore because I left the seat up. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Hey, Dax, p- pump up Hollywood Raw. Tell us uh, anything we need to know or anything you got coming oh, up. And I just love, remind our, I love our listeners. Show. I love your show with Adam. It's great. Oh, Dax. thank you. Thank you. Uh, no, listen, if you, if, if any of your listeners are into behind the scenes of Hollywood, that it, this is the show that you're going to want to check out Hollywood Raw. It's wherever you get your podcast. We're on YouTube. We're on Facebook. We're everywhere. You know, you'd have social media. But like I said, we are not asking the the typical red carpety type questions, the junket kind of questions. You know, we want to know how did you get in this industry? What has it been like for you? And what is the food like at the catering table of your latest movie? Because those are the questions no one else is asking and we're getting the best answers. We're opening up our guests and, you know, yeah, like I said, yes, we have celebrities on, but we also have all these other people that are working behind the scenes to help keep them famous or help keeping them relevant. And we're talking about the things no one wants to talk about. Like celebs. Yes. They call it the paparazzi. I don't think that's a bad thing. I have a very different viewpoint than a lot of people. I think that during in between movies or in between projects, you need to stay relevant. And if that means calling up a pap and getting them to show up to, you know, you walking out of a bakery, do it. And that's what we're talking about is, hey, something people are bending the rules, but it's a smart move in Hollywood. It's how the game is played out here. Period. Yeah. End of discussion. You got to be smart and strategic. Anything you uh, left just- from you, Kato? I would just say, people, listen to Hollywood Raw. Everything you said is, is why it's Hollywood Raw. Mm-hmm. Finding out the, the, the questions that you are asking are not the, the typical red carpet questions is great. I, 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 like I said, I did the show, and it's, uh, I, I love the question you guys do, and I think that's why you got a successful show. And it's one of the top and shows I was on shocked. Apple. It's huge. I was shocked to hear Cato still had the key. Yes. To yeah. the guest house. Still the key. The that blew house. my mind. Yes. The infamous guest house. You still own the key. Um, I thought that was such big news. I loved it. I think that should be a commercial for Lowe's or Home Depot. <laughs> 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 Kato you should. Cato in the guest house key. <laughs> hey, when you're locked out, call Cato. Cato, <laughs> Keto. He's the man. Yeah. Yeah. Kato, <laughs> Dax, Kato. thanks, buddy. Appreciate it. Thank Say you hi guys to our buddy Pat. Me. Appreciate it. Say That's hi to Pat. Best to you. I'll see you in Orange County. Love you, buddy. <laughs> Thanks, Bye. Dax. Okay. All right. Dax is great. Yeah. I to get a fax with Dax. You know, I remember him on TMZ. So many people do and talking about his pod. It's one of the top. His podcast, Hollywood Raw, is one of the top entertainment podcasts on Apple. Yeah. So they're doing a great job. And, and you know, the whole thing is, Dax. You, oh, you see him on TV all the time. You got that that shot of the the crew at TMZ. I mean, how how much fun it would be going going to work there because you've obviously got great relationships. It's just like Harvey did the great thing of creating a great workplace where you work, work, work is hard, but fun. Yeah. Fun pressure. They were under a lot of pressure to deliver. And then you watch that show. You're used to seeing it late in the afternoon or in the evening. They tape that really early LA time. Yeah. So those days start really early for that crew over at TMZ. All right. Happy early Thanksgiving, Cato. 
I and hope you have a great one. What are you doing? I'm going to probably go to uh, Vons and pick up turkey slices. <laughs> have you seen the prices of turkey? It's insane. You see the yeah. stories that your turkey dinner is going to cost you know, 40% more this year. Oh, yeah. And also, at the deli, I don't know if you go to the deli. I go there or pavilions, right? There's a, there's a thing with turkey and a bacteria or something. They're not selling turkey slice uh, Turkey. I'm like, what in the world? Did you know that? No, the world's falling yeah, apart. You can't is. get a turkey you, slice. I can't, I can't get turkey shaved turkey. You know, the, I get turkey slices. By deli, the way, deli turkey. Sheng Yi, what is, with her background growing up in Beijing, a traditional Thanksgiving dinner's got to be I, a little foreign for her. I'll tell you really quick, because I, I know we're going to wrap this up. I took Sheng Yi when we first met to a large Thanksgiving, when it was affordable, a large Thanksgiving <laughs> dinner, because she, she had no idea what it was. Thanksgiving, it's her one of her favorite things she's ever done. And she, every day in, since November started, she goes, what are we doing for Thanksgiving? What are we doing for Thanksgiving? I keep going, don't worry, baby, I'll get an invite. Well, folks, <laughs> listen to the show. I'm looking for that invite. Please tell me you have turkey and cranberry. That's my favorite meal of all time is Thanksgiving dinner. Me too, and it's the mashed potatoes for me. Nice and buttery. That I live for that. I don't get yep. that very much during real the Real potato, but I mix them with cranberry. I love real cranberry. All right, and a little turkey. football that day. Hey, have have a great Thanksgiving, everybody. We're thankful that you found our show. Oh. Download, subscribe. Gobble, gobble. One Degree of oh. Scandalous. Check us out on YouTube and everywhere you get your audio podcast. And, and share it with a friend, too. And follow us on social media. Please do. One Degree of Scandalous YouTube. We are good-looking guys. <laughs> For Kato Kale and I'm Tom Zenner. See you next week.